got bad network quality, bear with me. Um, but what we wanted to do today is uh, talk about the API that we built for, for Naptan for the download service. Um, and the API is a replacement for the, uh, the URL download, download mechanism that people are using, the download on the page, or the FTP download that I think some of you are using. Um, but actually what we wanted to do is just run through and give you a bit of a demo of how it works for perhaps five or ten minutes, so not a huge amount of time, and then just take your questions and field your questions. So we, we won't be using Mural today uh, and we won't be uh, running the sessions in perhaps similar ways to how we've run other sessions. Um, it would be good to do uh, introductions though very quickly um, and it'd be good to run run through those if we if we could just to say um, your name and and and, uh, and where you're uh, working um, and I just want to flag that if there if there are things that you don't feel comfortable discussing in the, in the public forum I'm really happy to set up a one-to-one -one afterwards so if you've got questions that you want to ask but you don't feel comfortable uh, doing that in, in this setting because we have got people across the industry I appreciate that then please just get in touch afterwards with me and I will set up a separate um, session um, uh, with you all um, and on that basis, I just wanted to flag that this session is just to talk through the API that we've developed, um, perhaps from a slightly technical point of view, or, or showing you how that works, and to answer and to get you to a chance to ask questions on the API. If you've got longer term or sort of policy questions that you wanted to ask, then I appreciate, uh, I'd appreciate saving them for a different forum. We're coming to PTIC on Friday, so we could pick that up there, or, or we could have a separate discussion. But I just want to focus this session on, on the API and, and how it works, uh, how it's going to impact you. OK, so um, I've introduced myself. If we could go around um, alphabetically, I don't think there's huge numbers of us. Um, so if we go to Adam first, if you could just do a quick introduction, that'd be great. Adam Stead. Hello, I'm Adam Stead from Transport for Wales. I uh, lead on website and app strategy here, uh, considering what that means for things like the future of journey planning. Oh, hi, Adam. I've just realised who you are. Uh, we've been chatting. That's good, we good have, to meet you. Indeed. OK, if we go through alphabetically, that's probably the easiest way. So Alex Willis next. Uh, um, yeah, Alex Willis. I work for a company called Alkira. We we um, work in the mobility space, like kind of build apps around yeah mobility. One of the things we're looking at is is bus um, bus data and how we can like optimize bus networks. Thank you. And uh, Ben Donaldson. Hi. Yeah, uh, I'm Ben, um, and I work for Transport for Greater Manchester. Good to have you. Ben Stanley. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm a software developer at Basemap. Uh, so I work with Dan Saunders, who is also in the call. Um, I think I will let him explain slightly better our products and what we do. Thanks, Ben. Chris? Sorry, Chris Hi, March. Uh, Hi, uh, Chris March, yeah, Transport for Greater Manchester, uh, senior software engineer. Uh, yeah, we're using that time data for uh, uh, some of our bus timetable services that we've got on our website and uh, passenger information displays. Cool. Uh, Chris Sherry. Hello, um, I'm Chris. I'm from Passenger Technology Group. We support uh, group independent and uh, transit authority operating companies um, with apps and websites and journey planning for their passengers. Uh, and we process NAPTAN uh, on a nightly basis. Uh, and uh, we request this meeting to uh, find out more about that. Cool. Uh, and then Alex, uh, Alex Cranton. I don't know why you, you, your name's coming the other way around, I'm afraid. So we've gone a slightly different order. Oh, and I think you might be on mute. You win a prize it's for the first time. Certainly am. <laughs> it's the first time I've done that as well. It's usually um, me. <laughs> Hi, I, I'm Alex Granton. Um, I work for uh, Sistra. Um, we've got a passenger transport information system called PT Insight, and I'm the uh, product lead and also a software developer. Thank you very much. Um, Dan Saunders. Morning, everyone. I'm Dan Saunders. I'm head of products at BaseMap. Uh, we love NAPTAD. We use NAPTAD in about 10 different products. Uh, most high profile ones is we do the TNDS. We run the TNDS on behalf of Traveline. Uh, and we run the NCSD, which is the coach data equivalent for the DFT, and it's in lots and lots of our products. And we're really excited to see the progress that's gone over the last 12 months and see how it continues. 
Thanks, Dan. Uh, Darcy? Yep, hi there. I'm um, Darcy Harmer Manning. I also work at Passenger Technology Group um, with Chris and Ryan, who are on the call. Um, so I'm product manager, and um, I think as Chris described um, very well, that we're um, one of the leading um, app and website providers for bus operating companies in the UK. Thank you very much, Darcy. Uh, David, else? Hi there. Uh, yeah, I'm David Else. I'm the CTO at Urban Things. Uh, we build uh, mobility to service platforms uh, as well as passenger apps uh, for the UK, uh, including UK Bus Checker. Also, heavily use uh, NAPTAN for, for those products. Uh, I'm also joined on the call by uh, my colleague Matt Law. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and David Mountain? Yeah, hi there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Dave Mountain, I'm um, Chief Data Officer at Transport API. Um, yeah, we've got various managed services uh, which are used by local authorities and transport operators, and that turns to the foundation to everything we do. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Flavia? Hi, I'm Flavia, and I'm a developer in the Napton team. And I think next is Florian. You're on mute. Switch on the camera, that's enough. Okay, hello, Florian Weiss, uh, company Mens, and we run several journey planners in the UK. For example, London uh, Nationwide Journey Planner, Nipti Journey Planner, Northern Ireland Journey Planner, and we take all the NAPTAN data on a weekly basis uh, to have all uh, consolidated stop database for the complete Nationwide Journey Planner. Thank you very much, Florian. Um, Gabriella? Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. I'm with Ita World, uh, where I'm my product owner, and we ingest the Napton data uh, as part of uh, our uh, data aggregation, uh, which then uh, creates products. And what we do is deliver high quality transit data to journey planners, Google Maps, Apple Maps, all those. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move to Joel. Hi, I'm Joel. I am a software developer on the Naptan team. Thanks, Joel. Um, Kevin Roderick. Hi, I work for a company called PTI Cymru. Uh, we manage the Naptan data in Wales. Um, we run the travel line service in Wales. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Lucy B. Morning, everyone. I'm Lucy. I'm a service designer in the Naptan team. Nice to meet you all. Uh, last two, we've got Mark Smith. Oh no, not last two, but Mark Smith. Hi, I'm Mark Smith. I'm the product owner for the scheduling system for Arriva UK bus, and I use Napton files to load into our current scheduling system. Cool. Um, Matt from Urban Things. Morning all. Yeah, I'm Matt Law, uh, also working at Urban Things with David Elfs. Uh, I'm one of the solutions architects here, so just keen to hear how we're going to use the API to get your data. Brilliant. Um, and Mike Foster? Fosker? Sorry. No worries. Hi, I'm Mike Fosker. I'm a product manager at ETA World. I work with Gabriella. Yeah, we use uh, the Naptan data in several of our products, so I'm here to learn about what's changing. Brilliant. Um, and then we've got Neil. Hello there, um, Neil McKinnon at Stagecoach. Um, we use Naptan as a foundation for our scheduling systems and uh, we also use it as a foundation for journey planners online. And uh, my side of things is sort of analysis, market catchments, etc. Thanks, Neil. Rachel? Oh, it's me. Um, I didn't see myself in the list because it put me at the top. Uh, I'm Rachel. I'm one of the software developers on the Naptan team. Thanks, Rachel. Rich. Uh, Rich. Hi, yeah, Rich McPherson. So I'm uh, IT project manager at Transport for Wales in di uh, digital services. So we've got a number of key uh, projects coming up that will be using Naptan data as part of the delivery mechanisms. Brilliant. Uh, and Russell? Hi all, yeah, Russell Pritchard, uh, Senior Software Engineer at Transport for Greater Manchester. As Chris already said, yeah, we use it. We use Naptan data across uh, services on our website and, and PIDs. Cool, thank you. 
Uh, and Ryan, next. Hi, yeah, um, Ryan House, software engineer at Passenger. Um, same as with uh, Darcy and Chris, we make um, apps and websites for bus operators and authorities. We also wrote um, Bus Stop Checker to validate NAPTAN data, um, which was the cause of some of um, taking another, another look at NAPTAN. Yeah. Uh, Sam, next. Morning. Uh, I also work at Eto World with uh, Mike and Gabriella. Uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, data systems administrators. Thanks, Sam. Um, nearly there this time. There isn't an extra more button this time with another 12 people hiding. Um, Sarah, next, please. Sarah Bradbury. Okay, we might come back to Sarah. Uh, so now. Yeah, uh, hi everyone. Good morning. So I'm also working with the Ito world as technical project manager and I'm working mainly on the bus open data system bots. So we are also ingesting NAPTAN data and using it for the data quality reports and validation. Yeah. Hi. Brilliant. Thank you. And then last two, Thomas and then Yurina. Hello, I'm Thomas. I am the delivery manager for the NAPTAN team. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Yolina. I'm the technical lead for the NAPTAN team. Excellent, thanks everybody. Um, it's great to have you all here. We really appreciate um, you coming to the session. Um, I'm going to, in a second, hand over to Rachel, who's going to give us um, a, a demo of the API that we've built. But just just to take things back a little step, we so we went live with the public beta, so the, the new download service for NAPTAN on the 1st of November. Um, and that's been running now for obviously about six weeks. Um, and our intentions are to continue to continue with that um, and to start to close down the the old download system from from the NAPTAN service. So the um, the old FTP and the old old download page from the old NAPTAN service next year. We've had a, a bit of pushback uh, and we've agreed to extend the deadline to the 14th of January um, to give everyone a bit more time to deal with the changes. Um, but we so that'll we'll be two and a half months that we've been running those things in parallel, which we hope is obviously enough time for you to to make the changes that you need to do. Um, and so the API that we're showing today, it isn't actually showing a new download or anything different. It's just a new way of getting to the same data that's been available um, since the 1st of November. So it's just um, going to give you the, the mechanism to to do that sort of automatic or, or programmatic download by, by being able to hit a URL that you can use again and again. Um, Rachel, are you ready? I am as ready as I will ever be, Adrian. Excellent. Thank you. Let me share uh, my screen. Well, before you, is oh. there any questions before we start? And then we'll hand over to Rachel. Sorry. You have a hand up. Will the NAPTAN data continue to be updated until the 14th of January? So, yes. Yeah, so what happens beyond? 14th of January. Could you that's explain? A, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so all we're changing is the is the access to the old download um, and encouraging people to move to the new download. So NAPTAN uploads, the last submission page, MPTG, all of these things aren't affected. What actually happens now if you upload a file to the old NAPTAN service, we take a copy of that straight away before anything happens to it and put it in the new service. Um, so actually the um, both the download and the both downloads at the moment are in sync, pretty much. There's a couple of issues in the CSV in the old service that we weren't able to fix and, and will not be able to fix, but everything else is the same. It's just access to that download page that's changing. Does that answer the question? Thank you, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Chris? Um, sorry if this is something you were going to answer anyway, but um, when you turn off the old NAPTAN, um, so the only remaining download will be uh, the new NAPTAN, which is currently under a beta URL. So yeah. is there a plan to change that URL to something more kind of production um, that, styled? For that yeah, I, word? So, so we, we've got um, 20 years of legacy IT um, knots and things all tied up all over the place. Long term, I want to just be able to use NAPTAN 
www.dft.gov.uk. There's all sorts of other things that are hidden in that URL at the moment that I can't switch off and, and mess with. Once we get everything across, so perhaps June next year, I would like to be able to change to the URL that is dft at naptan.dft.gov.uk. Um, okay, so, that, so so going forward, the, the Naptan URL will, well, all, all the live Naptan stuff will live under the Naptan beta URL until the foreseeable, so something like June. Certainly, I'd say that's medium, yeah, medium to long term. The, the beta tag is, is, is um, will stay. Um, and we'll, However, we'll sorry. Sorry, Adrian. I just no, want to jump in to make a note that the API is actually not under the better URL, right? <clears throat> the API itself is under the naptan.dft. Okay, so we'll probably be using the, the new API URL anyway, but it's just good to know what's happening with the, um, the current uh, download URL that we're using from the form. Yeah, so it's just the current website that's going to have a URL that will change in the medium to sort of long term future. But we will we will signpost that um, heavily before that happens. Um, Darcy, I'm going to make an assumption that you've got a legacy hand and hand over to Rachel unless you correct me. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, I, I guess it's a legacy hand. Um, I don't know what to do about that. We will work that one out in the meantime. I'll <laughs> hand over to Rachel and sort that one out in the background. Thanks, Rachel. Cool. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, so let me just share my screen. <clears throat> is everyone able to see that? Is it coming through? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So this is the. Um... Oh, it's a bit small, actually. Could you zoom oh, in a little bit? Awesome. Oh no, Teams is getting in the way. Is that better? Yes, thanks. Okay. So this is the. Um, the Swagger documentation page for our API. It's using just default Swagger. So there's a try it out section if you ever want to just play around with URLs. But we've got three different download, sort of roughly download options available. You can download the national NAPTAN dataset either as an XML or CSV using this data format query. So we've got the V1 currently in the first version, the access nodes and the data format. So I have some on a pasteboard. So if I open up a, a new tab, I can demonstrate. So um, as Yelena mentioned, we don't have the beta tag in the API URL, but by hitting that endpoint directly, you should get the CSV. My internet is just a little bit slow. So it's downloading that one there. Um, we can also switch that out with XML for the XML download. Um, if any other sort of data format is provided, it gives um, an error response that states this data format is not supported. So it does give some feedback if there are issues. You can also download a single ADCO code if you want the data for a single authority. Again, it needs that data format. Um, so we know how you want the file returned and then just um, the ADCO area codes, and that should then give us the single file. And you can also request um, any number of ADCO codes, just comma separated in a list. Again, the data format is a required field, and that will generate a file that combines all of them for you in the multiple stops. Um, yeah, and the Swagger page is quite nice. It lets you play around and will generate URLs for you as well. Um, if you're not familiar with Swagger and give some information on the error codes that are returned. Um, yeah, that's our, our API thus far. And I will stop sharing my screen and pass back to Adrian and also ask if anyone has any questions. Rachel, is it worth just showing using the Swagger page to create a URL with more than one local authority in it as well oh, yeah. just one final thing just um, sure. give me some local authorities Adrian give oh, me some don't codes this. Oh, oh no 480 now I now you know who my favorites are <laughs> oh I know I meant 380 actually sorry 3 380 I'm all, we'll go with CSV because my uh, my internet can't quite handle XML So yeah, when we put it in there, it does generate this 
request URL for us. Um, and so also that's the says, URL that you could, if you wanted to do the same query over and again, you could just obviously copy and paste that and use that anywhere. Yes. Goes without saying, I guess, but to someone not technical like me, that's that's probably a, a helpful point. I've actually not played with this before. Uh, just seeing how it um, adds in the comma separation, that should be fine. Um, yeah, it is. But yeah. Um, and we can hit this link directly to, to download the file, or you can hit this handy link as well. And so as as Yurina mentioned, we won't be changing this URL. These URLs will work permanently. We're not changing these. Um, we're not using tokens or any sort of authentication because this is an open data set and we want you just to be able to access this without having any barriers. Um, so we hope this is the simplest, easiest way for you to be able to access the data through our URL without any sort of barriers. Um, do we have any questions? Chris? Uh, hello, I was going to ask whether it supports transport encoding, but we've just checked and it does. So that's ideal for us because it means we can get a compressed version of it. Excellent. Uh, uh, we'll need to test that, obviously. Uh, yeah, well, if you could test that and feedback, that, that would be helpful. Well, that's one of the things we had uh, kind of top of our list of things to to ask or find out about was because mm -hmm. the um I think the download size from where it used to be a zip to what we're getting now was about 14 times larger. So that's yeah. ideal for us. So, that's a good, I'm glad you've raised that because we get that question a lot and everyone is asking us, can we zip the file up? Um, the reason we don't want to zip the file up is that I hope you can see for the sort of perhaps one of the next stages that we might be able to develop with the API would be that actually we could set it up so that you could request things like just show me what's what's changed since yesterday and actually you can start to just get the changes to the file rather than the the whole file and instead of i can't remember what the, what the zipped file size was so instead of downloading a file of that zip size actually you, now you can just download a file that has a very small amount of stuff in it that's just the stuff that's changed and hopefully that's the future direction of, of, of how we use the naptan api i can see we've got loads of questions chris do you have anything else on that before i move on no, I just want to say it was nice that um you um that we've got the option so we can download it unzipped or we can request the zip file if we want. Yep. Um I'll go to um I think these are in order, so we'll go to Mike first if that's okay. Mike Fosker. Thanks. Uh this is actually more a question about the content of the file than the API itself. I'm a, I'm a bit late to this, so I apologize if this has been covered previously. I just wanted to understand if there's any differences to the content compared to the old download file. So the one prior to the beta download. Um, for I'll take the XML first. There's one change to the XML that I'm aware of, which is that we've stopped populating the notes field. Um, some okay. local authorities had put in PII data into that field. Um, the notes themselves seem to be of a historic uh, nature to some extent, um, and so we haven't we didn't see a. a, a big valid need for them. So we've taken those out for now. We will we'll work with the local authorities to get the PII data removed from there and then we uh, and get the sort of culture of not putting that in and then we can start to put that back in if people feel that it's useful. With the CSV, there are a few changes. I don't know who use I don't know if that many people use the CSV. There are some specific changes that we've made to the CSV, um, partially because in the past we actually weren't putting out a CSV that was in line with the schema. We changed some of the things in there. So, for example, um, map reference was either a U or an I, but in the schema it should be UCOS or Irish OS. Um, and so we put things back to where they should be so that that's more accurate. There are a few more fields that we've not pulling across at the moment into the CSV, um, partially because they're a bit more complicated and because we weren't sure if people were actually um, using them. So those are things like locality name, parent name, uh, parent locality, um, town, crossing and suburb. Um, we're discussing whether they need to be in at the moment. If anyone's got any burning reasons why those fields are going to be particularly useful for them, it'd be useful if you could send me an email just to let me know about that. That would be really helpful. Um, and I'm just going to pass to the team. Have I missed anything on the significant changes between the files?
no, we'll take that as a no. Um, oh, oh, sorry, one one last version. I knew there was one one biggie. We've got a big policy at the moment of just re respecting what people give to us. Um, so we only put out what the local authorities um, give us. Now, what that means is that there are three different schema versions currently being used by local authorities, 2.1, 2.2 and 2.4. Um, so what we do is if you request a local authority file that is in 2.1, we will give you that file in 2.1 because that's what we've been provided. If you request a combination of files and there are different schemas within there, we will just make a 2.4 file and give you that file. Um, and if you get the national file, it will be a 2.4 version of that file. Um, we will we will document that and send that out at some point uh, in the in the near future because uh, I suspect that's going to be helpful to have that written down somewhere. So we we are working on that at the moment and hopefully get that out to you soon. Mike, does that answer your question? I think it does. Yes, thank you very much indeed. That was quite no comprehensive. Problem. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go on to Alex with this. Hello. Um, my question was like, how often does this the data set change? Is it whenever someone uploads a Oh, that's a good question. You enabled me to boast about how great the new version is compared to the last version. So previously people would update, put in a file, it would take about four hours to validate and then overnight it would be run as a batch and the data would be available the next day. Um, because we're taking the same data set straight into the new service, um, we process the file in, a, in about 15 seconds um, and then it takes another minute or two or up to five minutes if it's a particularly big file to get into the data set. Um, in terms of how often it updates, it sometimes updates it probably updates about 10 times a week um however lots of people do upload their files regularly even if there's no changes so we're not entirely sure exactly um how much change there is in the data set because we know that um i think it's national pti upload 30 files every wednesday even if there's no changes um so that's kind of skews the rate of change of the of the site what we're looking to do hopefully in the future is, is to understand better and be able to put out you know, this file was uploaded on this day, but no changes were made. That's kind of a future ambition, but it, it's about uh, about seven to ten times a week. We we think we see sort of changes. And 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 is that modified date in the data set? That's you say that sometimes there won't be changes. Um, it will be modified, but not not changed. Um, the file will be exactly the same as the last one that was put in. So, um, it'd be, I'm not sure exactly what users do in that situation. Do they change the modified date or just put the same file in? It's something that would be worth checking. And one more question, like how often did the uh, um, stops or uh, points get removed from, like do you, do you delete stuff from, from the data set? Uh, we've, we've been doing some work on this because there was a policy that DFT would archive all of the stops uh, over a certain period um, at, at a certain frequency. That fell down I think a few years ago and hasn't been happening and it's something that we're looking at at the moment in terms of how do we probably archive and remove stops um, so we're, we're still looking at developing developing that at the moment yeah that's all my questions <laughs> Brilliant. thank you I will pick up on the the point about the um, modified date thank you for that we'll go to uh, Dan Hi Adrian, uh, yeah, really good. I'm uh, really impressed with the API. It's come a long way since an early demo we had a few months ago, so that's really good. I've got a question around the weird other parts of Naptan that we seem to be one of the only companies that use, like the coach references and things like that. What's the plan for that? Uh, so is that going to be available to be downloaded via an API? I know lots of them haven't been updated since 2014, uh, but we still have uh, a, a business need that we need to process them in case they ever did get updated again. Um, will they, what happened to them files uh, kind of going forwards? So we haven't got any concrete plans for them at the moment, Dan. Like you said, it hasn't been updated since 2016. We haven't got a mechanism to update that. Um, our, we've, our focus is on getting download and upload and getting the majority of the old Naptan service calls down. Um, but we'll have to we'll have to pick that one up with you in the new year, I think. Um, OK, is it going to be likely that to just download it and archive them off and call it from a local a local host as opposed to as opposed to somewhere else? I'll be, I'll be honest, we haven't. OK, right now we haven't put a huge amount of thought into certainly like the sort of coach references and some of those. I mean, because some of them don't even work. Lots of them haven't been updated in quite a long time. Um, 
and that needs to be we're going to do some more work um, next year looking into uh, now that we've redeveloped Naptan or nearly redeveloped Naptan, what do we actually need to do with this in the future? Because it's a hugely useful thing. We don't want it to degrade in the way that it has done in the past, but what other things do people need it to do? So looking at things like that and also looking at the rail data, can we improve how that's presented and what can we do about accessibility data? So we have got sort of a long term sort of agenda of, of, of sort of reform uh, and improvements. But yeah, I wouldn't be able to give you a specific answer on that right now. All right, no problem. Thank you. No problem. Um, uh, maybe one for PTIC, actually, if anyone's if anyone would want to pick that one up in, in PTIC, the Public Transport Information Group um, on Friday. Uh, Rich McPherson. But, uh, yeah, just wondering, um, do you have a roadmap available for the changes that you're planning for this? I know you mentioned like about doing Delta feeds, etc. Are there any other things that you have in, in mind? And is there a plan for them? Um, we do have a roadmap. I'm not sure right now it's in a in a sh that's um that's that shareable. But if we were to perhaps we could come to you with that in the new year uh, and um uh, and do do a separate meeting or on that where we could I can sense there's a lot of questions not around the API today but around uncertainty in the future direction and it would be better perhaps to have a, a separate session um, early next year where we where we we pick up you know now that we've done down now, now that the download is happening what is the future direction etc because um i was hoping to focus this meeting just on the api and i um haven't come prepared with all the answers for a long-term roadmap etc um sure we'll pick up on that again i'll take the note to, to, that there are there's uncertainty and questions out there that need answering and we'll, we'll, we'll pick that up in the new year if that's okay. No problem. Thank you. Should we go to uh, Chris again? Oh, Chris, you bumped up the list again. How did you manage that? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, maybe alphabetical. Um, I wanted to ask, um, so we're in the process, of, we were in the process before this NAPTAN beta came along of transferring from using the uh, CSV to the XML. And we noticed there were quite a few differences in the data just between the CSV and the XML. So I wanted to ask whether the new CSV and XML are uh, have more aligned data um, and whether we can get any documentation on what's actually changed between what you had before and, and what we're now being given. I think um, there are definitely, the CSV was definitely a file that had issues on the old download. Um, we know, for example, there were 350 stops in an area that had been archived but were still coming through on old Naptan. And even though we put the file into the old Naptan and tried to clear them, they were just stuck. And so they weren't in the the new download. Um, I have got a, a, a list of some of those sort of quirks that we ironed out that I could, that perhaps we could. Um, uh, send round. That would be really useful just to just for those edge cases that may pop up as we start using the new the new Naptan um, for specific stops. If we get queries about them, then we we can go to that list and know that that's something that has changed from your side rather than our side. Yeah, there was a, uh, there's also a few issues with old Naptan was making corrections to data or what it thought was corrections um, which we're not doing in the new site so we're not necessarily providing longitude and latitude for all the stops they are there for all the eastern northerns but we don't have longitude and latitude for all the stops um, mm. because local authorities aren't providing those so there are some sort of differences like that i think it, if we if i aim to get something out um sort of early next year just to to, to make those differences clear i think that's going to be helpful We'd really appreciate that, but before the deadline of turning off the old old uh, downloads, that would be very yeah. helpful for us. Um, on the lat long conversion thing that you mentioned, um, obviously we're, we're aware that that's been 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 aware for a while that that is happening, and we put in our own lat long conversion to because uh, we require lat longs. So that's what everything we everything we do hangs off those rather than east things and north things. Um, but I, I want to just take this opportunity to express our, our concern that we've implemented our version of it. Um, other people will have to implement their versions of it. We could all be doing something very different. Um, and that particularly when um, systems that are talking to each other, um, we talk to some systems from other people in this room, for example, or, or compare to their data and um, 
we could all be doing things differently and that might cause issues between our systems. I think that's a very good point and I think one of the things that's come from sort of the meetings that Dr J has been running is the usefulness of having that community where we can talk about these things collectively and decide that the best way of doing those sort of things so that we can achieve some sort of consistency. I don't think it's necessarily DFT's role to mandate exactly how you might need to do things, but if we could have those discussions perhaps through the PTIC or other forums, I think that's going to be a helpful way of in, ensuring consistency. Mm -hmm. um, our, I think we recommended someone, sorry, sorry Chris. I was going to say our preference uh, would be that um, it, it is done uh, from a central source because then if there are inconsistencies or it, uh, things that aren't quite correct, at least they're consistently incorrect and that causes less issues in the long run than having um, us all do our own things and some of us get it right and then other people get it wrong. It'd be good to hear if anyone else has got any views actually rather than just me on that. On that. Yeah, likewise, yeah. Call. Yeah, uh, hi, Andrea and Chris. So um, actually, we are also struggling uh, for converting the sting and north thing to longitude and latitude because now we uh, we are one thing is we are working against our uh, timeline, uh, which which is 14th of Jan and uh, we are struggling to uh, take this change in because and we have to. Uh, but, but our earlier timeline was planned according to as there is no change in the data file and I agree with Chris, if there is a one center point or who can provide us the conversion there and as this data is going to be used by multiple sources or uh, multiple people, so that would be helpful thing. Yeah. Sorry, it's making a note. Yeah, thank you. We've compared some of our conversions to some of the conversions that were coming out of the old um, NAPTAM system and we're accurate to about five decimal places, which is uh, for those who kind of, uh, maybe don't know what that means in layman's terms, it's maybe you can tell that someone's in the same room as someone else, but not where in that room, that kind of accuracy. So that's pretty good, but it's still not, we're still not getting the same numbers. If that makes sense. You're not getting the same numbers as what's in old map time. Yeah. Yeah, and so I hope, I know this is not an easy question, an easy thing to solve, but I hope from that you can see that we're not confident about the conversions that we were doing and to continue to use them isn't a great idea, but it does seem like we need a consistent approach to what a new solution might be. And I wonder if we, I mean, leave that with me and I'll take that as an action to to think about how we approach that. Um, I'm nervous about us mandating something because it might mean mandating a tool or something else, which, but as a community, perhaps we could collectively agree an approach. I think that would be an ideal way forward. Yeah, we'd I love to be part be... of a working group or something like that. Sorry, David. Yeah. I think I think that would be good. I mean, it's um, being in the same room as somebody, that sort of uh, accuracy or precision is, is relatively good. And there's sort of plenty of historic examples that, I mean, it's it's going to be inconvenient to passengers in, in our case, but you know that there was a, a a good example that I was always told was was Shell Oil. It cost millions because their oil rig was in the wrong place for the pipe underneath, and and it was just, it was a conversion of Eastings Northings to lat log that was done in the wrong way that put them quite a bit out. So so it has potential to to propagate quite a lot of error. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to be right back. Just bear with me. We were moving through the API questions. We can continue to do that, but they're at the risk of you'll start asking me questions and I'll have to answer them rather than Adrian. Uh, I feel like Adrian's got better knowledge and I'm going to play the holiday card right now and say I've been on holiday, but I'll definitely have a stab at it. Uh, Adrian's back though, so I've, I've successfully that. filled time enough. Uh, and continue, please continue. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. I just stopped my house from burning down. Um, There's also think... a question in chat. I don't know. Yeah, if we forget about it. 
David, Alex, David and uh, Florian have had their hands up for ages, so I'm going to take those first and then go to the chat question, if that's okay. D uh, David else, do you want to go first? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, again, um, just want to say thanks for putting together the API. Uh, def desperately needed from our side uh, to switch over. Um, we couldn't do it without um, a downloadable version, certainly. <coughs> um, one one thing that I, I did want to ask, uh, which I think might be related to Dan's question, um, we also use the uh, NUPTIG download, the uh, National Public Transport Gazetteer download from the same FTP site. Uh, that, I believe, is still active and does get changed. Um, what do we do with that if the FTP site's going away? So it's just the download for the NAPTAN that will change. We're working on M MPTG um, uh, okay. uploads and the 940 stops at the moment, and hopefully we'd like to move them over around March, April time um, as well, but not, not on the cards at the moment. Okay, so the the FTP site is staying up with the with the NUPTIG XML in it. It's just the NAPTAN is not going to be there anymore or just not going to be updated. Um, yeah, we're, we're confirming exactly how we're going to do. There's a number of different points that we need to fix. We're, we're just um, finalizing plans for how we how we take it down at the moment. Um, but MPTG won't be affected. OK. Thank you, um, Alex Granton. Make sure I'm off mute this time. Hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to check the um, file upload format. Um, will that still work with existing upload files um, in the current format? Yeah, no, no change there. to that. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Cool. That easy um, one then. We, we're doing some work on upload at the moment, including trying to improve the last submissions page to make that really easy to see. Um, and we'll be coming out and doing research, hopefully, with, with a lot of you in the, next, in, the next, in the coming year. Great. Thanks. No problem. Um, is it Dave Mountain next? Oh, sorry, Dave, we've answered your question, hopefully. Yeah, I had three and they've all been answered, which is great. Thank you. Brilliant. OK, uh, Florian? Uh, yeah, question answered. Uh, what about the upload? So the upload is as it is and remains there for the next, let's say, months. Yeah, definitely. But answered already, thanks. Brilliant. OK, um, we'll go to the question in chat then. Um, if that's okay. So we've got Mark's question, which is when will the new API be available, please? I'm going to hand that over to Rachel, Joel, or Flavia and put you on the spot and say, do we think that the API will be ready by tomorrow? Potentially? Yeah, the API is ready. Um, we still need to add a link in the website to the API documentation, but uh, that will be done hopefully today. Oh, OK, today. Brilliant. Yes. Um, so we will email out everybody with the link to the site um, as soon as it's ready um, today or, or tomorrow, um, but very, very soon. Um, uh, just to add, strictly speaking, like the, as you saw from the demo, the API is already like kind of available and usable. So what we're still missing is just the link on the page, on the NAPTAN page to actually for people to navigate there. But since you've been here and you've been like exposed to the documentation, if you wanted to start playing with it, that's already there for you. Do you? OK, thanks, Elena. Thanks, Flavia. Um, and in terms of what's been changed, we've got a really messy version of what's changed that we were using for the people that were in the private beta, um, and we haven't tidied that up. I will try and get that tidied up and get that out um, in the next couple of days so that you've got something digestible that we can we can share with you. Um, so I would I, I said that after Christmas, but we'll get that done before Christmas and get that out. It shouldn't be too too much work. Um, just looking at Dan. Dan, is your a question? Do you want to do you want to come in on the going back to the East and Northerns uh, point, or should we hold that over for a longer session specifically about uh, that? That's a more general question because uh, we only use East and Northerns and we convert them. Uh, but I guess it's more of a question: is the issue to do the East and Northerns incorrect to start off with? If you convert bad data, you're going to get bad data as an as an output anyway. That <laughs> that is a very good point. That um so on on data quality there's been lots of topics around data quality uh, in the past about naptan and it's hard to say exactly what we're looking to do um 
Dr. Jay is doing some work at the moment to look at how we might find a way of assessing the data quality um, in a sensible way. So looking at quality standards or, or, or things like that so we can assess how, how good the data is. Um, something that we haven't really talked about and uh, we we'll hope we might, maybe we'll do this in the next year if we get time is we've actually made huge amounts of data corrections in the last six months um, since we've put the new um, um, NAPTAN in. It helped us notice all sorts of issues that were there with the data set that perhaps weren't apparent before, like those sort of ghost stops that I mentioned that even though they'd been deleted hadn't actually come out. Um, I think um, Eastings Northern specifically being quite hard for us to, to really pinpoint that we have to go to some extent on the local authorities being responsible for the data, but that's something that we can perhaps look at in that review of the data standards, the data quality. Okay, cool. Um, So I think Darcy, what we'll have to do, um, the, the the cat is out of the bag. I will um, I will reply to the email invite with the document link to the documentation. The API is ready. It's just the thing that we haven't done is put the link on the page, uh, and I was saving that moment until it was all definitely ready. Ready. I'm looking at Flavia. If that's something that's going to be okay to do, then I'll, I'll pop that in the e in an email after this session. Yeah, we will need uh, maybe half an hour to an hour to add the link. Um, but yeah, okay. the API is ready, you can use it. Yeah, so if you were quick enough when we were doing the demo, you'll have seen the URL, you can you do, I can't stop you from doing anything with that. Or if you took a screenshot, not that any of you would have done that. Um, okay, so I think, look, I think that's all the questions. I really, oh, David, was, we have one more question. Oh, more no, comment than a question. Yeah, just um, it just strikes me, a, a concept that's always stayed with me is someone described the map as a set of errors that have been agreed upon. You know, as long as we know what's wrong and we'll agree what's wrong, we can live with it. And it just strikes me the same thing, particularly with that long and probably a whole bunch of other things as well. So I can see the um, advantage in centralizing some of these uh, conversions. Okay, cool. Um, Alex, is that a legacy hand or another question? I don't mind either way. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I said legacy hand there. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> I thought I'd take it down, but it seemed to have popped back up again. Yeah. Nice. My Teams is quite laggy as well. I can never tell. Um, <laughs> I'll hang hang on for another minute or so for any other questions, but just to make a quick um, run through the things that we've picked up. So we're going to just check with the modified date. If someone puts in a new file, does it change the modified date or does that not get changed? I'm not sure if I know the answer to that. Um, and we need a separate session to look at the conversion now that it's not happening automatically and um, a session uh, and a, a write up of the changes in, in terms of the outputs just to be clear on, on what's changed between old and new. Is there anything I've missed? I'm not sure we covered the second part of Mark's question about picking oh. up a file of, of what's changed. Oh, I think that that's what I was hoping to get out in the next uh, couple of days or so. Um, the sort of file of what's changed. That's what I was uh, meaning was okay. that is there a different if I misunderstood that one or is that okay? I thought he I maybe it's Mark can clarify. It's just a question, Adrian, around currently if I'm downloading a West Yorkshire file, I have to download the whole file. Are we saying that with the new one I can just download the changes that have taken place? Oh sorry, I see. Um so that's something that we uh we've you know, in developing the API so far, we've got to a point where that's now possible, um, and we're going to look at how we can develop that um, in, in the sort of in this next um, in, in in the next year, okay. in the new year. Sorry, so not not right now, but it's we've opened up the possibility for that to happen now. So, um, depending on on priorities, we'll we'll try and have a look at that. Sorry, I misunderstood the question there. My my fault. Um, okay. Thank you everybody for coming and thanks for so many questions. It was really interesting and really good to chat to you all. Um, we will oh, that was either, uh, we will have another session on on the future of Naptan in the new year, which we will set up through presumably through um, Tim Rivets um, Arctic events. Could I ask if anyone's not been receiving our regular emails um, and I haven't mentioned it to you recently. Can you let me know and I'll add you to our mailing list to make sure that you get we, we sort of email out once a month. If you're not on that list, it's really important that we get you on there so you can hear any updates. Um, if there any other questions, I will unless there's any other questions. Oh, Chris. 
Um, I just wanted to add to you, you were running through kind of the, the summary and the list of actions uh, off the back of this. And um, I just want to reiterate that we'll be really keen to be part of a working group to discuss this um, kind of the, making a consistent way to convert these that long. So I think that's going to be really important going forward. Yep. I, I'm sort of going to assume there isn't, is there a big appetite to do that before Christmas? Uh, our, our priority is is just getting the new NAPTAN and yep. the conversions working before you drop the URL and things start breaking essentially. So that's our biggest priority. Um, mm -hmm. But off the back of that, we might start seeing some support requests come in of well, this stop has moved or things like that. So um, the sooner we can kind of have those discussions, the better. Yeah, if I was to look at scheduling something in the sort of first full week back after Christmas, that probably feels the most realistic time to do I that. think that would be great, yeah. Yeah, we will see what we can do. Thanks, Chris. Um, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate your time and questions. And um, if anybody does want to, if anyone if we said anything that concerns you or you've got any particular issues that you're worried about and you want to set up a one to one to discuss them privately, please do get in touch. I'd be really happy to to make time to do that with you. Um, otherwise, thanks, everybody. If I don't see you again, Merry Christmas and um, yeah, see you. See you soon. <laughs>